past class, we have learned about embryogenesis, the different events leading to the formation of an embryo. So today, we learn a new topic, we learn about placenta. Yeah, we all know about placenta. Now what is placenta? We have to say that placenta provides nourishment, it provides connection between the fetus and the maternal body or the blood. Clear? So now we will see the structure of the placenta and the functions of the placenta and the different parts. Clear? So first of all, what is placenta? Placenta is the physiological and mechanical connection between the developing fetus and the maternal blood. Clear? So one more time. Placenta is the mechanical and physiological connection between the maternal body or the blood and the developing fetus. We can say that it forms a structural and functional unit between the embryo and the mother. That means this placenta will help to contact or to connect the developing fetus that is embryo with the mother's body so that the fetus can get the nourishment, nutrients from the mother. Clear? Now, look over here. The figure number 3.26, so can you go through it? So here, you can see the developing embryo. Alright, so here we have got the developing embryo. Here we will find the umbilical cord. Clear? Then here you will find the aligned toys. This will take in the next part. Aligned toys here. Then we will find the yolk sac, the Korean part. But basically over here, right now, mainly we focus on two particular terms. First one, trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi. Okay, that's for right now. Let's focus on the two terms, the two structures, the trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi. Clear? Okay. Now, these structures, the trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi, they are produced from the trophoectoderm or trophoblast. I want to try to recall those structures which we have done in the previous classes. Clear? So from the trophoderm or the trophoectoderm, there will be formation of chorionic villi and the trophoblastic villi. And we have learned that in the previous class that chorionic villi will help in the formation of an embryo. So for right now, kindly remember the two structures, the two terms, trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi. Clear? Now we will go in the next slides. So let's see the structures now. Clear? Yeah. So when we talk about placenta, so look over here. Placenta means, look over here, after implantation, that means when the blastocytes will be implanted in the wall of the uterus, mainly in the endometrium lining of the uterus, which is implantation. Clear? Yeah. Clear? Implantation. The blastocytes will be implanted to the endometrium lining of the uterus. So after implantation, two finger-like projections starts appearing from the trophoderm or from the trophoectoderm. Clear? So after implantation, two finger-like projections starts appearing from the trophoblast or from the trophoectoderm. So what are those finger-like projections? They are mainly trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi. Clear? So, the trophoblastic villi and the chorionic villi, they are produced from the trophoectoderm after implantation. Clear? Okay. Now, so, the intimate contact, second point over here, the intimate contact between the chorionic villi of the embryo and the uterine wall of the mother is called placenta. That's why we are studying that the chorionic villi will lead to the formation of an embryo. Clear? So here, whenever there will be contact between the chorionic villi of the developing fetus and the uterine wall means the endometrium lining of the uterus of the mother, then that will be known as placenta. Clear? The word placenta is mainly the contact between the chorionic villi of the developing fetus and the uterine wall of the mother. Clear? Now next one, 
placenta is connected to the umbilical cord to the help of umbilical cord. So look over here. So this is the developing features of the embryo. All right. Now here you can see this one is the umbilical cord. All right. And here you can see the term placenta, placental villi is actually the chorionic villi that will help in the formation of placenta. So this one is the chorionic villi that will form the placenta and by the help of umbilical cord, the developing fetus will come in contact with the placenta. Here and here we can see the cavity of the uterus, this outer lining or the lining of endometrium of the uterus. Here, so this is the cavity of the uterus. Here you can see the yolk cell. So for right now, let's look at developing embryo part. Embryo is connected to the placenta by the help of umbilical cord. Here, so after the implantation, two finger-like projections appears from the trophoectoderm. What are they? This part is called the <coughs> this part. First part is called the trophobastic villi, <coughs> and the second projection is called the chorionic villi. So therefore, the contact between the chorionic villi of the fetus and the uterine wall of the mother is known as the placenta. And placenta and the embryo, they are connected with one another by the help of umbilical cord and by the help of this cord, whatever the nutrients, whatever the nourishment will be required by the embryo, it will get from the maternal body. Clear? Next slide. Now, the part of the placenta, see the carefully, the part of the placenta contributed by the chorion means chorionic villi. Clear? So the part of the placenta contributed by the chorion of the fetus is called fetal chorionic placenta. So when the chorionic villi of the fetus will help in the formation of the placenta. When it becomes the part of the placenta, then that is called the fetal chorionic placenta. Chorionic means chorionic villi, clear, of the fetus. So when the chorionic villi becomes the part of the placenta, then we will call it fetal chorionic placenta, clear? Number two, what is maternal placenta or the decidua? The part of the placenta which is contributed by the mother uterine wall. So when the mother's uterine wall will be a part of the placenta, then it will be known as maternal placenta or decidua. And this decidua is the most important part of the main part. Yeah, so maternal placenta or the decidua is the main part. Actually, this forms the placenta part. Right, so we have got over here, you can see over here, we have two terms, fetal chorionic placenta and the maternal placenta or decidua. So when the fetal chorionic villi become the part of the placenta, then it will be known as fetal chorionic placenta. And when the uterine part of the mother's body will become the part of the placenta, it will be known as maternal placenta or decidua. And we have got different parts of the decidua, we will go through it. Okay, so now we will talk about the maternal placenta or the decidua. So generally we have got three parts of the maternal placenta or the decidua. Clear? So what are those three parts of decidua? First one is decidua bacillus. Second part, decidua capsularis. And the third part is decidua parietalis. Clear? So these are the three parts of maternal placenta or decidua. Now what is decidua? When the mother's uterine wall becomes the part of the placenta, it is called decidua. Okay, and it is differentiated into three parts. And what are those parts? Decidua bacillus, decidua capsularis, and decidua parietalis. So we will go through it one by one. So first one, let's see decidua bacillus. Now which part is decidua bacillus? Okay, so first look over carefully. This is the part of the uterus. Yeah, this is the part of the uterus. We have got the endometrium lining. There are three layers: endometrium, myometrium, and the perimetrium. So we have got the inner lining of the uterus. Okay, here now kind of look over here. Okay, so this one 
Okay, so looking over here, this one is the Corioni villi part of the fetus. Okay, this is the Corioni villi part of the fetus. This one which you are seeing over here, which is surrounding the fetus is mainly the endometrium lining. Okay, so actually these are endometrium lining. Clear? And over here, we will find the layer called Myometrium of the uterus. So now we will see which part is the decidua basalis part. Okay, so we have to focus over here. Alright, right now, don't look at this part. Right now, mainly focus on this part. Okay, so we are now going to see which part is known as decidua basalis part. So can you go here? It is a modified part of endometrium. Endometrium means lining of the uterus. Clear? So it is a modified part of the endometrium between embryonic chorion and the uterine myometrium. So one more time, this is the modified part of the endometrium between the embryonic chorion and the uterine myometrium. That means which part is known as decidua bacillus? So look over here now. So we can see over here this part is the chorionic villi part or the embryonic chorion. Alright, this is the embryonic chorion part. So I will write over here, it will be easier for you. You can write over here, embryonic or fetal chorionic part. Clear? So, this part. Alright, so this particular part is known as decidua basalis. Clear? So, only this part. The entire part is not known as decidua basalis. Only those part of the fetal chorionic part and the myometrium part of the uterus. Myometrium part, remember. Alright, so the part of the endometrium between the chorionic villi of the uterus of the fetus and the myometrium part of the uterus forms the decidua basalis. Clear? So this one is the endometrium part. And this part is the myometrial part which we are seeing over here. So this particular region, clear? So this particular region, this particular region is known as decidua basalis. Alright, so the part of the endometrium between the embryonic orion and the endometrium and the uterine myometrium. And it forms the maternal part of the placenta. Clear? Okay. Now we will see the next part and the next part is decidua capsularis now which part is decidua capsularis we will go through it clear? Yeah, look over here decidua capsularis is the portion of uterine endometrium between the embryo and the uterine cavity so now we are going to see that particular part between the embryo and the uterine cavity. So this one is the uterine cavity part. You can see over here. Cavity of uterus. So this one is the cavity of uterus. Alright. So now let's see which part is the decidua capsularis part. So this particular part. Alright. This particular part was decidua bacillus. Now the entire developing fetus will be surrounded by the endometrium. You can see. It will be covered by endometrium. Clear. Now the next part, that means this particular part, clear, this particular region, this particular region between the embryo. So between the embryo, right, well, between the embryo and the uterine cavity. So between the embryo and the uterine cavity part, that means this particular part which surrounds the, the developing fetus. So this particular in the metrium, it's one of the interdeveloping fetus. So the part between the embryo and the uterine cavity. All right. So this particular part between the embryo and the uterus cavity is called decidua capsulis. So this part was known as decidua capsulis, but now the part between the embryo. So this particular part between the embryo and the fetus. Sorry, and the cavity of the uterus. Because over here we can find the uterine cavity. Alright, you can see over here. You can find the uterine cavity over here. So, between the uterine cavity and the embryo, we will find decidua capsularis. 
because it will entirely surround the developing features. Remember. Next one is decidua parietalis. Now, which part is decidua parietalis? Look over kindly. It remaining portion of the modified endometrium that lines the remaining part of the uterus except the place of placenta. That means. Decidua parietalis is not in contact with the placenta. All right, it just lines the remaining part of the uterus. That means this particular lining, this particular lining is known as decidua parietalis. All right, because it does not line the embryo. It is not in contact with the embryo part, the fetal part. It just lines the uterine part of the mother's body or the uterus part. Okay, so we can go one more time. The remaining portions of the modified endometrium that lines the remaining part of the uterus except the place of placenta is called decidua parietalis. So, you know what we have learned? We have learned about the decidua, the different uh, portions. First one was decidua bacillus. So, this particular portion will be find the chorionic villi. Alright? And the portion between the myometrium part, this part, myometrium part of the uterus and the chorionic villi part of the fetus was known as decidua bacillus. Here, the second one, the endometrium will completely cover the developing fetus of the embryo. So, therefore, the uh, portions between the embryo and the cavity of the uterus is known as decidua capsularis. And in third modified part of the endometrium, that just lines the uterus. All right, that just lines the uterus, except the placenta part is known as decidua parietalis. So these are the three differentiation regions of maternal placenta or the decidua. Clear? Now next one. Human placenta is known as hemochorial placenta or hemoendothelial placenta. Now why it is called hemochorial placenta? Because over here the chorionic villi part of the fetus will come in contact with the endometrium lining or the blood vessels of the mother. So that's why we used to call it hemochorial placenta. Over here hem. Hem means the blood vessels or the connective tissues of the mother's part and chorion means the chorionic part of the fetus. So that's why the placenta of the human is also known as hemochorial placenta. So what the hem means? Hem means the maternal blood part or the connective tissue parts and the chorion means the chorionic villi part of the fetus. Clear? So let's see what is the significance of the hemochorial placenta. First one, it allows an efficient exchange of materials between the fetal and the maternal blood. So an exchange of materials will be there in between the fetus and the maternal blood by the help of this hemochorial placenta. Number of significance, there will be separation of blood streams. That means the fetus will be protected from the high pressure of the maternal blood. So there will be separation of the blood streams that protect the fetus from the very high blood pressure of the maternal blood. And the third important function significant is that it takes the passage of harmful materials into the fetal blood. Okay, that means the harmful substances cannot enter into the fetal placenta, but there are few substances which can easily enter from the mother's body to the developing fetus, like HIV virus and retroviruses, which can pass from the mother's body to the developing fetus. What is the significance of the hemochorial placenta? Clear? Now, next one, we will talk about the functions of placenta. Alright, so what are the different functions of placenta? So we will go through it now. So the first function of placenta is transport of nutrients because the developing fetus needs nourishment, nutrients for its growth and development. Okay, so by the help of the placenta, the developing fetus will give those nutrients and those nourishments. Alright, so the nutrients will pass from the mother's body to the developing fetus. Number two, transport of gases. So exchange of gases O2 and CO2 will also take place or will also occur by the help of placenta. Number three, then not only the transport of nutrients, transport of gases, but those waste products which are produced by the developing fetus will also be removed from the fetus by the help of placenta. 
Next one, it provides immunity. What kind of immunity? Passive immunity. Now, what do you mean by passive immunity? It means the ready-made antibody are being transported from the mother's body to the developing fetus. Over here, the ready-made antibody. Alright, the antibody which was produced in the mother's body is being transported to the developing fetus. And what is the name of that antibody immunoglobulin which is transported to the placenta? It's immunoglobulin G, IgG. Okay, we will call it IgG. Antibody IgG or immunoglobulin IgG. Clear? So this particular antibody IgG will move from the mother's body to the developing fetus to the placenta and provides passive immunity because over here the fetus is receiving the ready-made antibody producing the mother's body clear so the placenta also provides immunity okay next one it acts as storage organ why it stores glycogen for the embryo before the liver is formed. So these are the general functions of the placenta. It helps in the transport of nutrients, it helps in the transport of gases, it helps in the removal of waste products or dietary products, it provides immunity, passive immunity, and it acts as the storage organ. It stores glycogen before the liver is developed or will be formed. Now we will discuss about the most important functions of the placenta. Alright, now what is the part? Why? Do we say that or how does the placenta act as endocrine gland? Now when we are talking about endocrine glands, remember endocrine gland they secretes hormone. Clear? So how does placenta it act as an endocrine glands? That means it has to produce the hormones. So now we will talk about the different hormones which are produced, which are secreted by the placenta. Now since hormones are produced from the placenta, so therefore placenta it acts as endocrine glands. So now we will see the types of hormones which are produced by the human placenta. The first hormone is chorionic thyrotropin. Alright, chorionic thyrotropin. It stimulates the mother's thyroid gland to secrete thyroid hormone. Can you go through it? Second one, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone HCG okay human chorionic gonadotropin hormone it maintains the corpus luteum and it stimulates the secretion of progesterone and estrogen pregnant during the time of pregnancy pregnancy progesterone we can say and actually during the test for confirming pregnancy this particular hormone HCG will be there in the urine Alright, so presence of the hormone HCG or the human chorionic gonadotropin confirms pregnancy. So this part of the hormone will be there in the urine. And while performing the test for the pregnancy, this hormone will be detected. HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. And it maintains the corpus luteum and corpus luteum will help in uh, secreting the hormone called progesterone and estrogen and you know progesterone it helps in maintaining the lining of endometrium right next hormone chorionic corticotropin stimulates the mother's adrenal gland to secrete the aldosterone to retain more sodium all right so this hormone aldosterone will help to retain will help to absorb the sodium number four hormone progesterone so placental progesterone helps in maintaining the pregnancy, decreases uterus contractions and promotes the growth of endometrium. That's why during pregnancy this hormone plays an important role because this hormone is essential for maintaining the lining of the endometrium of the uterus. Clear? So that's why this hormone progesterone it plays a very very important role during the pregnancy time. As well estrogens, it helps in enlargement of the pregnant uterus, growth of the breast, growth of genitalia and relaxing the pelvic ligaments in mother. This is the function of estrogen. Next hormone is human placental lactogen and the functions of this hormone is to stimulate the growth and development of breast, decrease the insulin sensitivity of the mother so that the mother is not able to utilize its own glucose. Next hormone is relaxing 
and this hormone is responsible for making the pubic synthesis soft and it helps to facilitate parturition that means the pelvic synthesis will be soft at the end of the pregnancy this hormone will be released relaxing and this will make the pubic synthesis very very soft and that will help in parturition what is parturition is the process of childbirth so since this hormone chorionic thyrotropin human chorionic gonadotropin chorion corticotropin progesterone estrogen human placenta lactogens relaxins are released from the placenta therefore placenta act as in the kind gland clear so in today's class we have talked about the placenta its structures its function and in the next class we will talk about the extra embryonic membrane of the fetus what are there mainly the elementary part the oxa okay so in the next class we will talk about those extra embryonic membrane